Catholic Forum on Water Rates and Water Conservation. I'd like to start out by introducing myself. My name is Nadine Aletto and I am the Finance Director here for the Village of Woodridge. I've been with the Village for approximately two years now and I will be presenting information tonight on water rates. Also presenting tonight is Linda Dalton and she is our County Manager with the Village of Woodridge. She's been with the Village for almost 15 years now and a little bit later tonight she'll be presenting some information on water conservation. I thought I'd start out with a clip, or a little bit of clips first to introduce our subject. We have a geyser gushing in California right now, but this isn't Yellowstone. No, this is Los Angeles, and you can see a water main break on your screen. This is right near the campus of UCLA. That's Sunset Boulevard. Apparently, it is shut down for good reason in both directions, and you can see the cars on the right-hand side driving through the water that has now tore up that roadway. There's a river gushing down Sunset Boulevard right now, so clearly drivers cannot head down there. Very busy street usually at this time of day. And you can see what it's wow. done to the roadway. It's just torn up chunks of concrete. It is spurting at a high rate into the air. And until they can get the water source turned off, they've got a problem on their hands. And look at the amount of water flowing down the side of the street. And you can see it's flowing onto that street to the right where cars are still able to get by. We've been watching these live pictures for a little bit. And you can see as they back out the huge area that it's affecting. It's flo uh, yeah. flowed all the way into this field nearby. It's now soaked. The track of that field, the football field, is underwater. And you can see all the water that is pooling. So this has been going on for some time. It's cascading down steps into whatever building that is. Unclear if this is actually the campus of UCLA or right nearby, but it certainly looks like a college campus when you have those sort of facilities. Um, we're working to get more information, but what a mess going on right near UCLA in Los Angeles. And you can see these people, they're stranded. I mean, they may be able to go one direction, they can't go the other, and this guy's got his bike and he's willing to brave the, the uh, ankle deep water. So just a mess and you can only think about the damage. But obviously this has been going on for some time if you look at the amount of water um, and you can only imagine the amount of damage that is going on as this flows into buildings. There are some evacuations going on in that area. As we said, they've shut down at least Sunset Boulevard and you know that other streets are shut down as well. But you know, it's been some time since I've seen a picture like this. And once again, all this water we believe coming from that one water main break. But that's one heck of a water main. Yeah, we're being told that this is actually the practice football field at UCLA, mm. and there is a parking garage as well as this water kind of cascades down. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, to have that much water kind of spill over into such a large area so fast, I think hopefully they're going to pan up and show you again uh, the break that is just peeling away pieces of the road. Um, man, you got to believe they are scrambling as heck to try to figure out how to stop this. Look at the water.
clips that were just shown actually show um, what is happening across the country in public works departments um, on a regular basis, and this is exactly what is impacting our rates as well. The first clip that you saw was a water main break that occurred in Gainesville, Wisconsin on March 16th of this year. The second clip was from Los Angeles. It was a break that occurred in July of this year. And lastly was that small educational piece that we shown on how a water main break is repaired in the Madison Water Utility. Now you note in that last clip that they noted on average that that crew performs approximately 100 repairs on breaks annually. For the village, our average is 50 to 60 per year. As I mentioned prior to watching the clips, water main breaks are becoming increasingly more common across the country as our infrastructure is aging and coming to the end of its useful life. A recent study by the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning found that the Chicago area alone is losing 22 billion gallons of treated water per year through leaky pipes. To put that into perspective, that's water to serve approximately 700,000 people. Nationwide, it is estimated that about 2 trillion gallons are wasted. And that's about one-sixth of all the water that this nation treats. This is a major problem that directly impacts rates in two ways. First, this is unbilled water loss. The village is required to pay the DuPage Water Commission for this water because we used it. However, it never made it to a home or a business to be billed and so the village is not receiving any revenues to offset this cost. Secondly, it directly speaks to our aging infrastructure and the need to maintain and reuse our water main systems in order to tighten them and reduce the amount of unbilled water that occurs. And we'll get into that a little bit more later in the presentation. First, let's talk about water rates. At their November 6th meeting, the Village Board passed water rate increases that will take effect with all usage built on or after January 1st, 2015. As you know from your water bill that you receive from us on a monthly, a bi-monthly basis, there are really three components to your bill. The first is what you are charged for your metered water usage or your water rate. This is billed on your actual usage. And the village contracts with DuPage County who goes out and reads your meters and then they provide those reads to us on a bi-monthly basis. The current rate being charged per thousand gallons of water is $6.87. The new water rate per thousand gallons effective in January will be $7.92. That's an increase of $1.05 per thousand gallons. And 71 cents of this increase is the increase in what the DuPage Water Commission is going to charge us to purchase the water from the city of Chicago. As all of you all know, the village, as have all other suburban municipalities that receive their water from Lake Michigan, have seen major increases in their cost to buy this water the last four years. This is partly because up until recently, the city itself did not charge its own residents for their water usage, so that there was no revenue stream coming from their own residents. And in addition, they did not put any dollars towards maintaining or replacing their infrastructure, and then were suddenly faced with a water system that was in need of repair and at a considerable cost as well. So as a result, the city passed on a set of major water increases to the suburban municipalities. The customer service charge, which is the fixed cost of your water bill, will see a 3% increase beginning in January. Now this charge is not based on usage, but rather is based on meter size. An average residential meter size is three quarter inches. And for that resident, they will see a rate increase of 36 cents. Their bi-monthly charge is going to go from $11.06 to $12.00. The sewer maintenance fee, which is a rate charged per thousand gallons and is based on your actual metered water usage, is going to increase 12 cents per thousand gallons. The new rate beginning in January will be 87 cents. And this rate does not include the cost to treat the water. That is done by DuPage County and is one of, at one of their treatment plants. They bill for that separately. The increase in the sewer maintenance fee of 20 cents, along with the 34 cent increase in water rates, were increases made by the village. And they are needed to fund the maintenance and the replacement of the village's water and sewer system, which like the city of Chicago, is also aging. The impact of these rate increases on the average residential customer who uses about 11,000 gallons every two months 
will be $7.49 monthly or about $15 per bill. This is not just a village problem. This is a regional issue. All suburban municipalities are facing the same issues that the village is. We're seeing increases in costs to purchase the water, coupled with an aging infrastructure. In addition, they are also experiencing decreased revenues from decreased in consumption. All of these factors combined are too significant to be able to absorb these costs. As a result, have been faced with adjusting the rates that they charge to their customers, sometimes significantly, in order to cover these increases. The revenues from water and sewer user charges are the main source of funding for all of the village's water and sewer operations, and they must be sufficient in order to sustain the operations of the system. The village is not able to transfer money from other revenue sources in order to support these services, so as a result, rates are directly impacted. This graph here shows where the village falls in relation to our surrounding communities as of February of this year. Woodridge is the first purple bar there on the graph, and you can see that we were slightly under the average monthly bill of about $109, and that we are basically in the middle of the pack. This slide here shows the history of the village's water and sewer rates over the last 30 years. You can see that the water and the customer service charges that are the yellow and the red lines on this graph, you can see that for many years the village was able to keep these rates relatively now this graph here shows a couple of things. First it shows that it was good for the consumer was able to have water rates that changed very little over many years. The village's water and sewer reserves were sufficient to cover any fluctuations that we may have experienced in water revenues or expenses from year to year. And also the village had a relatively young water and sewer infrastructure system that did not cost much for maintenance and repairs. Secondly, it shows that beginning in about 2009, rates started to increase village was starting to need to invest more in capital replacement and maintenance because our system was aging, which by itself would not have been unmanageable. However, right at that same time, we were handed the city of Chicago that said that our cost to purchase the water was going to more than double within four years. The effort then, and what the village continue now, is to continuously look for ways to be efficient in managing our water and source system and to control our costs wherever possible. One example of this is the village does not automatically place their vehicles and equipment because they've been fully depreciated or because they, on the books they've reached their um, useful life. Every year we evaluate their condition and we'll defer purchases if at all possible. So what exactly has been impacting our rates? Now I've alluded to a couple of things um, earlier in the presentation. So first we have the increase in our water um, costs to purchase the water from the city of Chicago. We also have an aging infrastructure that's causing water loss from breaks, as well as requiring us to invest more money to repair and maintain that system. And to top it all off, we are seeing reduced overall water consumption. By far the biggest impact of these three are the rate increases over the last four years that we've seen to purchase the water. Five years ago, we were paying $2.08 per thousand gallons and beginning in 2015, we're going to pay $4.68 per gallon. Like I said earlier, that is more than doubled in just a few years' time. Now, the village was unable to absorb these costs, and as all of you are acutely aware, raising our rates and receiving increases over the last four years. This year represents the last of the increases by the City of Chicago and the DuPage Water Commission that we are aware of at this time. Although we do expect that there will be some sources in future years and we have built that into a 10-year forecasting model. This slide here is the breakdown of the rate that we charge to us per thousand gallons. The yellow portion that you see here is the amount of the village's annual water rate that is used to pay our operating and capital infrastructure costs. So this is the rate that the village needs to charge in order to run our systems. The portion that is in red is the village's cost to purchase the water from the city of Chicago. You can see over the past 10 years, the yellow line stays relatively the same. It even decreases slightly in 2009 and 2010 before you start seeing gradual increases over the next several years. Now these increases are necessary as we begin to address our infrastructure needs and we need to also um, increase our reserves to comply with our fund balance policy. 
And this is a normal and expected annual adjustment, and you can see it would not result in major increases to the resident from year to year. The red line, however, shows a dramatic rise in the cost to purchase the water from the city, and is the reason for the significant increases that you have been experiencing. Another major impact to the water and sewer rates is the village's infrastructure needs. And I've been talking about this throughout the night, but at the beginning of the presentation, I showed a couple of clips from water main breaks, and I talked that this is not just a village problem, it is a nationwide problem. And it's simply our infrastructure is aging. The village was incorporated in 1959, and so now we are considered middle age. Much of our water and sewer mains are now 55 or more years of age, and they are needing more maintenance and upkeep and are also approaching, in some instances, the end of their useful life. Because of this, we are finding more leaks in the system during our leak inspections that need to be addressed. We are also experiencing more major breaks in the system that are expensive because of the amount of lost water that occurs, as well as the costs incurred to repair those leaks. And that video clip from Madison that showed the main break repair that stated that particular break took six hours to complete. Some bigger breaks can take much longer than that, they can require a contractor for, to bring in heavy commit, co, com, excuse me, to bring in heavy equipment that the village does not have, and can take place after normal years, all of which significantly increases the cost of repair. Water breaks often don't follow a work schedule. And you can talk to anyone in public works, and they can all share stories about how they've been called out in the middle of the night or on a holiday to repair a main. The village also does regular preventative maintenance on their system. And some of the ongoing maintenance ta tasks include regular repair and replacement of the valves and the hydrants to keep our system in good working condition. We clean our sewer mains. We perform semi-annual leak detection system. We conduct smoke testing of the sanitary lines to look for rainwater infiltration into the system. And where possible, we do sewer lining, which is less expensive than replacing mains and can effectively extend their life. Unbuilt water loss is another major impact on rates. The Chicago-based Center for Neighborhood Technology recently put out a report that estimates that as much as 6 billion gallons of water per day may be wasted in the U.S. For the village last year, we had approximately 110 million gallons of lost water. Now, some of that water loss is expected, and it occurs for a variety of reasons. For example, we do have unmetered water that is used by the fire department to fight fires. They also exercise the hydrants on a regular basis to be sure that they're in good working condition in the event that they are needed to be used. Water is lost during hydrant flushing, which is done to ensure that there's proper pressure in the mains to effectively pump the water to fight fires. And we also have water loss from building and construction activities that occur within the village. For the village, we typically saw three to four percent unaccounted for water loss for these activities. The majority of our water loss that we experienced last year, however, occurred from water main breaks. During last year's brutal winter that we had a couple major breaks in the system, due to the location of the break and the large amount of snow cover that we had throughout the entire winter, they went for a good time undetected. These couple breaks alone resulted in almost a half a million dollars in lost water last year. The village, however, is being responsive to this issue and has raised our rates so that we are able to invest more dollars in our infrastructure in order to tighten up our system and reduce the occurrences of these breaks. Another impact to our rates is actually something we're going to give you some tips on what to do a little bit later in the presentation when Linda speaks, and that is the village is seeing a drop in our annual consumption. You can see by the graph on the chart here with the exception of 2013, is when, which is when we experienced those main breaks, we have seen our annual consumption go down. This drop in usage means that we have to charge more per gallon to collect the necessary revenues to supply that are needed to provide an ongoing water and sewer system. Now there are several reasons why we are seeing a drop in consumption. One reason is in response to increasing rates. Rate increases directly impact a person's budget and for some of them, it is enough for them to modify their water behaviors. Another reason is due to our conservation efforts. We as a society are becoming more conscious of our environment 
And we do understand that water is a precious resource and it is not limited, it is not unlimited in supply and cannot be unnecessarily wasted. And so we have implemented practices that make us good stewards of our water usage, such as using rain barrels to water our lawns and gardens. In addition, many new and remodeled homes now have low volume beds, toilets and faucets, and more and more of us now are having high efficiency washers. And so we're seeing reduced consumption in our homes as well. Another factor that directly impacts our consumption is the weather. So we would normally expect to see a spike in usage during the hot summer months, and even more so if we have a dry, hot summer. However, of late, we've had cool, wet summers, and so we've not had the typical increases in the summer months, summer months that we would expect to see. So in summary, the village is constantly monitoring the water and sewer fund, and we strive to keep rates as low as possible while maintaining our sewer and system systems. We are regularly water usage and we compare this to what we've built out to our customers and we also investigate any differences between those numbers. We analyze seasonal water trends and we compare these to our actual consumption. We look at our revenues and expenditures and we have delayed projects if, or activities if revenues are not sufficient to support them. We monitor what development is occurring in the village annually perform a comprehensive water and sewer rate review during our budget process. This is where we review our fund performance and we pre prepare long-range forecasts. We look at what increases to the cost that there may be, what improvements we may need to the system, and what rate adjustments may be necessary as a result. We do all this to ensure the stability and the viability of the fund, not only for today, but for the future years as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. I'm also be available after the presentation. So with that, I'd like to ask Linda to come up. And she's going to speak to you about water conservation. As Nadine mentioned, I'm Linda Dalton. And I'm here tonight to provide you with some information on water conservation. First, I'd like to provide you some facts. As you can see, 70% of the earth is covered with water. Of that 70%, 97% is salt water and 3% is fresh water. Of that 3%, 69% is ice caps and glaciers, 30% groundwater, and less than a half a percent is surface water. Of that half a percent, 87% comes from lakes, 11% comes from swamps, and 2% comes from rivers. This is why only 1% of the Earth's water is suitable for drinking. Eighteen percent of all fresh water comes from the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes consist of five lakes, and that's Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, in Lake Ontario. Lake Michigan is the second largest water source in the Great Lakes. 75,000 people in the county of DuPage rely on Lake Michigan water. <clears throat> the Great Lake Compact li Limit by law in the state of Illinois is 3,200 cubic feet per second per day, which is 2.1 billion gallons per day. In 2006, Illinois recorded using 1.98 billion gallons per day. That's 95% of the maximum amount allowed to use. We consume fresh water faster than natural water cycle. So it's our responsibility to protect and preserve water. Our community benefits by water conservation because it preserves our future water supply as well as our environment. It also saves money and energy. Did you know that 75 or uh, 70 percent of all water consumed indoor and 30 is outdoors? During the summer months, 50 percent of the water is consumed for using water for watering your lawn and gardens. 
Please keep in mind that all the percentage, percentages provided to you today may vary according to the resources that are used. The biggest indoor use is toilets at 20%. Washing machines, showers, and faucets are approximately 19% each. Leaks make up 14%, baths 5%, dishwashers 1%, and the other 3% makes up from miscellaneous items. By changing a few household basic items, it could help you reduce your water consumption by 35%. A couple of items have a small cost attached to it. However, they offer a long-term savings. New toilet could save you more than 50% in water consumption. The place a toilet starts at approximately $90, that does not include labor, but could save you about $10 per billing cycle. Old toilets are about 3.5, five or seven gallon flush. New toilets are at a 1.6 gallon flush. A shower saver can save you more than 40% in water consumption. The cost to replace a low flow shower head starts at about $20 and could save you $7 per billing cycle. Without the saver, it would be approximately five to ten gallons per minute and with the, the saver it would be approximately three gallons. Installing a faucet aerator screen into your existing faucet could save you 50% on your water consumption. The cost of an aerator starts at about four dollars and could save you nearly ten dollars per bill cycle. Without the aerator you would be using about gallons per minute and with the aerator would be 2.5 percent or 2.5 gallons. Purchasing a new washing machine is a little bit more costly. However, you could save 40 percent in water consumption by installing a front loading machine. The cost of a front loading machine starts as low as $400 but could save you as much as $8 per bill. Obviously, the return on the purchase is not as big over time. However, it, goes, it, it does go out and you need to replace it. You might want to consider high efficiency front end loading machine. So when you look at the cost of each household item and what it would normally cost, your average bill would be dollars for just a consumption. If you replace the household items that, that I just mentioned, you could reduce your bill to $65, and that would be a cost savings of 35%. So in theory, if you replace your toilet, install a shower saver, put a faucet aerator, that would total about 100, as low as $150, and it would pay for itself within nine months. You take $35 times four and a half months, that would be $157. Now let's look at some other tips that would not cost you anything. Brushing your teeth or shaving. You could turn the water off. By turning it off during this event, you could save up to three gallons per minute. Don't run a dishwasher unless it's full. Dishes utilize between four and six gallons of water per cycle. What I do is I have a sink that has two compartments. I put about two gallons of water in the sink, fill it up, do my dishes, put the soapy dishes on the other side. I take my hose nozzle, spray it off. I probably use only about three gallons to do dishes. This is less than running a half load of, in the dishwasher. When washing clothes, you to select the cycle so the machine fills with the proper amount of water. Heavy loads are about 10 gallons more than a lighter load. Avoid taking longer showers. You reduce your water consumption between 3 and 10 gallons per minute, depending if you have a low flow shower head or not. 
Keep in mind, these savings not only reduce your water bill, but they could save you money on gas and electric for heating the water that you didn't use. So let's switch gears for a moment. Let's talk about outdoor tips. As you can see from this slide, you could lose up to 600 gallons of water per hour for a running hose. Be sure to turn off your hose when you are not using it. Consider using a mist nozzle at the, at the end of your hose to utilize less water when it is on. When you're washing your car, consider using a bucket of water. This will minimize the amount of water that you use. Last, when you consider, sweep, uh, consider sweeping your sidewalks or driveway instead of using a hose to hose them down. You want it, it's easy to take the hose and spray everything off, but you're using a lot of water when you do that. If you take a, 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 a broom and sweep it off, it takes a little bit longer, but it is easier on your pocketbook. If you're gonna water your flowers, consider watering it with a watering can. Uh, that you're just watering the flowers and not everything else around. If you water in the morning or late in the evening, more water will be absorbed into the ground and less water will be evaporated. Watering your lawn only needs about one inch weekly, two times if it's extremely hot. Watering your lawn early is more effective than watering your lawn frequently. If you're using the sprinkler to water your lawn, be sure not to water more than your lawn. You don't want it to go on the sidewalk or your house. That's just going to be uh, wasting water. Uh, the biggest waste of water is watering too much too often. And you might want to use a timer. That'll help you keep track of how long you're running the water. A few lawn and garden tips. For a nice, healthy, beautiful lawn, let grass grow a little longer. Uh, this, this will help you protect the new growth by reducing the amount of evaporated water. But please, don't let your grow too long. You may not be in compliance with the village ordinance for tall weeds and grass, uh, which is eight inches. A good length, approximately four inches. Control your weeds. Weeds deplete nutrients out of the ground and suck up more water than flowers. Mulch is another way to control your weeds. It also keeps your ground moist. Three inches of mulch is recommended. Consider leaving organic materials on your lawn, such as your grass clippings or leaves, and this will help preserve the soil and reduce evaporation. You may want to aerate your lawn at least once a year to allow for deep penetration. Now for rain barrels and dye tablets. I'm not sure how many of you today are familiar with the rain barrel. Rain barrels collect the rain that comes from your downspout and collects it into a barrel for future use. Rain barrels are available for purchase in Page County for approximately $75. There is a stand also available for rope, which is cost dollars. If you want to see an example of rain barrel, we do have one at the Public Works lobby at One Plaza Drive. You can visit DuPage County website for more details. One toilet in every is leaking. We're handing out dye tablets tonight for you to go home and check your toilet. The packets include full instructions of how to use these tablets and how to find the link. Please take one packet for every toilet in your home. You may not notice a small leak. However, if you have a big leak, you could be losing over one gallons per day. So please go home and check your toilets. I 
see it every day in the water billing department. People are calling off saying, I received my bill, why is it so high? It's because they did not take a proactive approach. Instead, they reacted. So before you leave, we have five handouts on the back of the table. Please make sure you take one. They're very informative. We have lawn care water use. We have indoor water use. We have outdoor water use. How to fix a toilet leak. So a water quiz. Uh, how much water do you use? We also have the dye tablets on the back table. So be sure to take those. And we also have two websites listed up there. One is the EPA and one is the DPWC website. The EPA is the Environmental Protection Agency and the other DuPage Water Commission. Both of those will provide you conservation information in greater detail. It was very enjoyable spending my evening with you tonight and thank you for coming out. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>